Let's sew something warm and feminine with Simplicity 8014. I'm sewing View A today a long shirt dress. This pattern features a collar, cuffs, two breast pockets, and it buttons from top to bottom. But my favorite feature is the sleeve tab, so you can roll up and button that sleeve. The fabric that I'm using in this video is a honey latte cotton flannel from Fluid Plus Drape. It's wonderfully soft and easy to sew. I hope you join me sewing up this shirt dress. Let's get started. I've applied interfacing to the wrong side of my front bodice piece along the outside edges, applying my interfacing within the outermost fold line on the pattern piece. I did this for both front pieces, and I transferred both of my darts. And now I'm ready to pin them in place. Fold each dart in half, and pin through one dart leg and out the other. Doing this for both darts. Now I'll take both darts to the sewing machine and sew from the outside edge to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so I can tie them in knots. And press your darts downward. Now we're going to fold our center front edges twice, folding them to the wrong side right along the lines indicated on your pattern piece, and giving those edges a good press. Once you have those folds in place, we're going to baste these upper edges of the facing. We're also going to baste these vertical edges of the facing, starting from the top and stopping seven inches from the bottom edge. Doing this for both bodice pieces. And I'm just going to hand baste those sections in place. Now to form the pleats on the bottom of the bodice, follow the lines indicated on the bottom of the pattern piece, folding along the solid line, carrying that over to the corresponding dotted line, and pin in place like so on the fabric pieces. And then on the outside of the garment, we can baste those pleats in place. Now I'm going to take my pocket pieces to the ironing board and fold the top edges to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. Once those top edges are folded in place, I'm going to flip them to the right side, and then fold the top edges once more to the right side this time by one inch for both pockets. Then I'll sew these facings on both sides with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now that the facings are formed, I'm going to trim those side seam allowances to a quarter of an inch, just within the facing section. And then I'll turn those pocket facings right side out. Then I can go back to my ironing board and press the side and bottom edges to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. Now take the pockets to the sewing machine and edge stitch close to the bottom edge of that facing from one side to the other for both pockets. Now we're going to place our pocket onto the right side of the front bodice, aligning the top edges of the pocket with the dots indicated from your pattern piece. And pin in place along the side and bottom edges. Do this for both front pockets. Then we're going to top stitch the side and bottom edges of both pockets twice. First, we'll edge stitch close to those folded edges, then we'll top stitch once more a quarter of an inch away from the original stitching line. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of two of your flat pieces. Then turn these pieces to the right side and place your remaining flat pieces right sides together with the interfaced pieces. Pin the side and bottom edges. Sew the side and bottom edges with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then trim those bottom corners. And turn these pocket flaps right side out. And give them both a good press. Then we're going to top stitch those side and bottom edges of the pocket flap just as we did for the sides of the pocket. First edge stitching, 
and then top stitching once again a quarter of an inch away from that stitching line. Mark the placement of your buttonholes in your preferred method and then go ahead and sew those vertical buttonholes. Now we can attach our flaps to the front bodice. I'm going to situate this flap so that the raw edge is aligned with the top of the pocket with about an eighth of an inch gap in between and pin in place. Doing this for both flaps. And then I'll sew my flaps in place, stitching three eighths of an inch away from their raw edges. Then I'll trim those flap seam allowances by about half. Then I'll fold the flaps downward and give the top edges a good press. And then you can top stitch along that top folded edge of the flap from one side to the other with a quarter inch seam allowance. Here is the right side of my back bodice piece. We're going to form the bottom pleats just as we did for the front bodice. We're going to fold from the solid line marked from your pattern piece, taking that material to the dotted line also marked on your pattern piece. And pin in place, doing that on both sides. And then baste the edges of those pleats in place. Now I'll place the bottom edge of my yoke right sides together with the top of the back bodice, matching the notches and pin in place. Sew this seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, finish your seams, and then press the seams toward the yoke. Now that that seam is finished and pressed toward the yoke, we're going to work from the right side of the garment and top stitch this seam twice. Once again, edge stitching close to that seam line on the yoke side of the seam, and then stitching again a quarter of an inch above that seam from one side to the other. Now we can align the shoulder seams of the front bodice pieces with the shoulder seams of the yokes, right sides together and pin in place. Sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, finish your seams and press them toward the yoke. Now with those seams finished and pressed toward the yoke, we're going to work once again from the right side of the garment, top stitching those shoulder seams on the yoke side, first edge stitching, then stitching a quarter of an inch away just as we did for the bottom edges of the yoke. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of one collar piece. Then place your other collar piece right sides together with the interfaced piece. Pin the side and unnotched edges. Sew the side and bottom edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Trim the seams and the corners. Turn your collar right side out and give it a good press. Then we'll top stitch the side and bottom edges exactly as we've been doing, edge stitching and then stitching a quarter of an inch away. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of one neckband piece. Then turn it over to the right side and place the uninterfaced side of your collar right sides together with this neckband, matching those edges of the collar with the dots transferred from your pattern piece, also matching the notches and pin in place. Then take your remaining neckband piece to the sewing machine and sew a line of stitching through that single layer along the longer edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Press that bottom edge to the wrong side right along that stitching line. Once that lower edge is pressed to the wrong side, we're going to trim it to a quarter of an inch. Now we'll place our neckband pieces right sides together with the collar sandwiched in between and add it to your pinning. Now with the folded edge of the uninterfaced neckband still pressed under, we're going to stitch all around the curved edge of the neckband through that collar with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now we can trim this seam allowance and clip into the curves.
Now turn those neckbands right side out. Place your interface neckband right sides together with the neckline, aligning the center front edges and pin in place, doing the same at the opposite center front, and then match the notches and pin in place. Remember, we're just pinning the interface neckband, leaving the other neckband piece free. Now we can stitch the neckline and the interface neckband straight across with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure that you don't catch the opposite neckband in your stitching. I've gone ahead and pressed that seam up toward the neckband. Now I'm going to take that bottom folded edge of the inner neckband and place it over that seam line so that that folded edge just covers our stitching and I'm going to pin in place from the outside all the way around. Now that I have that inner edge of the neckband pinned in place, along that seam from the outside, we're going to edge stitch the entire perimeter of the neckband all the way around. Now that that collar is complete, place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together and pin the side seams. Sew both side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, finish your seams and press them toward the back of the bodice. Here is the bottom of one of my sleeves and I've gone ahead and transferred the stitching lines for the slit. We're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew from the bottom edge to the top of the point and then pivot our stitching to do one single stitch across and then we'll come down the opposite end. Now we'll cut in between those stitching lines, careful not to cut through the stitching at the top point. Press one of the long edges of your continuous lap to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch. Then we're going to open out the slash so that it's a straight line, and we're going to pin the right side of the continuous lap to the wrong side of the slash. Pinning them together straight across. Then we'll sew the continuous lap in place, sewing right along that original stitching line that we sewed along either side of the slash. And then press those seam allowances toward the lap. Then we'll take the opposite end of the lap that we pressed under and fold it in half so that the folded edge just covers the stitching line and pin in place all the way across. Then I'm going to stitch very close to that seam line from one side to the other. Now on the inside of the sleeve, Fold the lap in half so that both sides are evenly together. And we're going to sew right across the top edge of the lap to keep it in place. Sewing a triangle here at the very top of the lap. Then for the side of the lap that's closest to your pleats, you're going to fold that edge backwards right along the seam line and pin that in place. Then we're going to form the pleats just as we did for the front and back bodice pieces. Folding the pleat from the solid line marked from your pattern piece to the dashed line. Doing that for both pleats. Now we'll go to the sewing machine and baste both of the pleats and that edge of the lap in place. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of one of your tab pieces and then place your remaining tab piece right sides together with this piece. 
and pin in place along the side and bottom edges. Sew the side and bottom edges with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Trim the bottom corners, turn it right side out, and give it a press. Then we're going to top stitch the side and bottom edges as we've been doing, edge stitching and then a quarter inch away. And we're also going to create the buttonhole at the bottom center according to the marking on your pattern piece. Here is the wrong side of my sleeve and I've transferred the tab line onto my fabric. Now I'm going to place the tab on the wrong side of the fabric so that the pointed end of the tab is pointing up toward the sleeve cap. Align the line at the top of your tab with the line on the sleeve and pin in place. And then sew the tab to the sleeve along that line. Then trim that seam by about half. Fold your tab downward along that seam, and then top stitch the tab in place a quarter of an inch away from the top edge. Repeat that tab construction for both sleeves. Now I'm going to flip the sleeve to the right side, and I'm going to sew my button in place right in the center of those two stitching lines. Now to prepare for when we insert the sleeve, we're going to baste along the sleeve cap. Use the longest stitch on your machine and baste with about a quarter inch seam allowance from notch to notch. Remembering to leave thread tails on both sides so that you have threads to pull for easing. Now fold your sleeve in half right sides together and pin the underarm seam. Sew the underarm seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and finish the seam. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of one of your cuff pieces. And for the remaining cuff piece, you're going to press the notched edge to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. And then trim that pressed edge to a quarter of an inch. Now place your cuff pieces right sides together, pinning the sides and unnotched edge. Sew the sides and unnotched edge with a 5 eighth inch seam allowance. Then trim those seams and the corners. Turn your cuff right side out and give it a good press. Now with right sides together, we can pin the sleeve to the cuff. Aligning the raw unfolded edge of the cuff along one end of the slip opening and pinning in place. And doing the same on the other side and then match your notches to pin the rest of the cuff in place. Careful not to catch that folded edge. Then we'll stitch the cuff to the sleeve with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, once again being careful not to catch that folded edge of the cuff. Then you can trim that seam and press it up toward the cuff. Now we can place the folded edge of that inner cuff piece right over the stitching line and pin it in place from the outside. Now we're going to do our top stitching all around the entire perimeter of the cuff. Stitching first very close to all of those edges and then stitching again quarter of an inch away from the edges all the way around. And I also went ahead and sewed the buttonhole on the side of the cuff that will sit on top of the other. And now we're ready to attach the sleeve to the bodice. Place your sleeve right sides together with the armhole, aligning the underarm seam and pin in place. Also match the notches that indicate front and back and pin in place. Then pull your basting stitches to ease the top of the sleeve cap. 
Once that sleeve material fits into the armhole, go ahead and pin in place. Then we can sew the sleeve in place with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Sew slowly and carefully so that you don't catch any puckers as you go. And then finish your armhole seam allowances and repeat on the other side to install your other sleeve. Here is one of my skirt back pieces. I'm going to take it to my serger and finish the vertical raw edge from top to bottom for the center back, doing this for both back pieces. Now I'll place both back skirt pieces right sides together and pin the center back seam. Sew your center back seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seam open. Now that that center back seam is finished, I'm also going to finish the side seams separately. I've also finished the entire outer edges for both pockets for both pocket sets. Place one of your pockets right sides together with the side seam of the back skirt, aligning the notches and pin in place. And repeat for the corresponding pocket at the opposite side seam. And then sew the pockets in place with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then open those pockets over their seam allowances and away from the skirt and give those seams a good press. And repeat to attach your remaining pockets to the finished side seams of your front skirt pieces. Sewing at 3 8 and pressing the pockets out. Now place your front and back skirt pieces right sides together. I've gone ahead and marked my large dots here using pins. We're going to sew from the top of the skirt to the first large dot with a 5 8 inch seam allowance back stitching to secure. Start stitching again at the next large dot, once again back stitching to secure, and then continue stitching with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way to the bottom of the skirt. And repeat to attach the opposite front skirt piece to the back skirt piece of the opposite side seam. Then we can stitch around the outer edges of the pocket starting from the top of the pocket with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around the bottom edge until we get to the same large dot that we referenced earlier toward the bottom of the pocket. And do this for both pocket sets. Turn your pockets over to the front skirt piece, aligning the top edges and pin in place. Do this for both pocket sets, and then baste the top edges of those pockets in place. Here is the right side of the bottom edge of my bodice. Place the top of your skirt right sides together with this bottom edge. Match your center backs, your notches, and the side seams, as well as opening out those folds at the bottom edge of your front bodice so that you can align those vertical raw edges of the skirt and the bodice piece and pin in place. Stitch from one front edge all the way across with a 5 8 inch seam allowance to the opposite front edge and then finish those seams and press them up toward the bodice. I've applied the interfacing to my front skirt piece within the lines transferred from my pattern piece. Now we're going to fold those center edges of the front skirt piece to the wrong side just as we did for the front bodice earlier. Folding it once along the line transferred from your pattern piece and then folding it once again along the second line from your pattern piece. Do this for both front skirt pieces from top to bottom. Now that we have the center front of the skirt folded twice to the wrong side, we're going to fold back the facing along that innermost fold. Folding the facing so that it's now right sides together with the bottom of the dress and pinning in place. Sew the bottom edge of the facing to the front skirt with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and repeat on the other side. Now I'll trim that seam allowance within the area that I sewed. Doing this on both sides. Then we can turn the facing back to the inside of the garment, poking out the corner. 
Now for the bottom hem of the skirt, I pressed it to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch, and then I pressed the raw edge to meet that crease so that I have a rolled hem here. I did this to roll the hem from one center front all the way across to the other. Now we're going to stitch the hem in place starting from one center front all the way across, edge stitching close to this upper fold. Now we can stitch the facing from the collar seam, edge stitching close to that folded edge, all the way down to the bottom of the dress, repeating on both sides. Then we can remove any basting stitches from earlier. Now I'll use the buttonhole guide pattern piece to mark the buttonholes on the right side of the dress and I'll use pins to mark where I'm going to be sewing the buttonholes. Sew all the buttonholes in place, also sewing a buttonhole into the neckband according to the marking from the pattern piece. Now I've also used pins on the left button placket to mark where the buttons should go on this side right across from their corresponding buttonholes, and I'll sew them in place. Also sew the buttons underneath each pocket, as well as sewing them opposite the buttonholes for each cuff. Now your dress is complete. Thank you for watching this sew along. Check out the rest of my video library for more great video tutorials, and I'll see you in the next video.